I get a lot of questions about selecting repair shops and avoiding crooks. Now, there aren't too many of them in this business, but there are enough that you need to avoid them. You have to protect yourself. Now, one person asked if getting an estimate before letting a shop work on their car is a good idea. Well, duh, of course it is. Or, better yet, maybe you could just sign a blank check and hand it to the service writer when you drop the car off. But, and it is a big one, make sure the estimate is realistic, not just wishful thinking. Some shops give you a ridiculously low estimate to get you to leave your car. Then they rip a few things apart so it can't be driven, followed by, oh, sorry, but you need stuff not on our original estimate, and it's going to cost blank, blank, blank. It used to be called bait and switch, and no matter what you call it, it's alive and well in 2018. If you're a person who shops lowest bidder for everything, you might be a home run for a crook by shopping nothing but lowest price. You'll probably find someone who will give you a really low bid that only covers the basics. But in the end, most jobs don't wind up being just the basics. And you pay more or a lot more than the original low ball estimate. So, before you say yes, make sure the estimate is real world and worst case, not just best case wishful thinking or what you want to hear. And speaking of what you want to hear, that's exactly how some of you get scammed. You unconsciously tell the shop what you're expecting and they parrot it back to you. You're as happy as a clam in mud, but just like that clam, your happiness could be short lived. Now, when you tell the shop what you want to hear, you'll probably get just that, rather than a correct diagnosis and repair. Another really great way to be taken is self-diagnosis. This is when you read something on the internet or get free advice from a friend or relative and persuade yourself their suggestion would fix your car's problem. But remember, the information was free and usually is worth exactly what you paid for it. You pay nothing, and it's worth nothing. So, unless you know for sure, don't take your car in and ask for a specific repair based on a self-diagnosis. Because you asked for it, you got it, but it didn't fix the problem. Hear that sucking sound? That, my friend, is the sound of your hard-earned money being sucked down a rat hole. Your diagnosis your loss, not the shop's loss. To avoid losing money, describe the problem and ask for an estimate to fix it, not a specific repair. Another scam is where the shop has old parts for demonstration. Most common is a dirty air filter from another car that's shown to you. But unless you know exactly what your old air filter looks like, well, you would never know if it's yours or not. And don't think you'll outsmart a scammer by asking for your old parts back. Actual crooks will already have authentic bad parts from another car to give you. Also, watch out for fake parts because counterfeit parts are very common these days. A too good to be true price may be due to cheap ass counterfeit parts, which allows the shop to offer a really low price. Now, do Look for a clean shop with ASE certified techs. Get a written estimate and, if possible, compare prices. Always insist on an itemized receipt and a written copy of all warranties. Finally, only pay for personally authorized repair. If you arrive at the shop to pick up your car and they present you with a bill that is more than 10% above what you authorized, don't pay it. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe to Goss's Garage on YouTube, follow us on Facebook, and for more car tips, tricks, and money-saving ideas, visit goss-garage.com. Drive gently. We'll see you next time right here in Goss's Garage. <music>